marry the already established man or marry the hustler? Let's talk about it. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ngozi and if you are new to the channel then don't forget to subscribe and remember to click on that little notification bell so you don't miss an upload. Now we're talking about marriage, whether to marry the already established man or whether to marry that hustler who's on the upcome, right? Now I think that there are pros and cons to both aspects. If you marry a man who's already established, that sounds amazing. However, you run the risk of being on the outside of his success. You run the risk of not being a part of his story. Uh, and you also can't guarantee the source of his wealth. Okay, this is a really important one. And if you marry an upcoming individual, a hustler, someone who hasn't quite found their way, but they have a vision, there's also a risk. He might make it and he might not. And you might have a really difficult life financially and might end up being the breadwinner as well as the mum. So having a family, having children is a very hard job. It's a full-time job. It goes unrecognized. It's not rewarding in any shape, form or manner. There is no reviews. There is nothing to say you are advancing in this part of your life in terms of being a mum. But at work you have reviews, you have promotions, you have pay rises and so on and so forth. But with being a mum, there's no direction. There's no uh, job satisfaction as the case may be. It's just take, take, take. And you're going to have to do all of that and then become the breadwinner, not just be a parent to you children but also have to carry a husband along if he's not financially stable so there is that risk as well there's a risk to all sides now i have a story to tell you i always do uh, i was once upon a time set up with an already established man and i'll tell you how that played out my dad is the one who actually wanted to set me up with this individual my dad used to work in the northern parts of the united kingdom uh, so say maybe glasgow or peterborough oxford um, the Mid Midlands and so on his work took him a lot of places and if he had a couple of days here or there he would come and stay with me in London in my really tiny studio apartment and after say a couple of days he'd be back on his way again to some part of the UK on one such occasion he had stayed with me for a couple of days and was heading off to I think it was Milton Keynes so I'm taking my dad's suitcase out of the house and my dad has another piece of luggage on him and we're heading off to the bus stop we didn't have a car didn't have much it was in a small studio flat and if you recall a video I uploaded a couple of weeks ago an iCard should pop up taking you to that video I spoke about how hard it was for me coming back to this country as a young teen um, and although I was a citizen I returned to the UK with three pounds in my pocket and blew it at the airport so I came in with nothing and I worked my way up to wherever it is that I am now so I had absolutely nothing so we're dragging this suitcase all the way to the bus stop and we get there as I always do anytime he visits it's the same pattern and we didn't realize that there was this man a neighbor who had been paying attention to us you know you got those nosy neighbors yes and um, I get to the bus stop with my dad we're waiting for the bus and this BMW May that year just pulls up in front of us and this young man pops out, good looking, well put together. And he greets my dad formally. It's a traditional formal way of greeting an elder in my culture. So he pops out and he says, oh, my name is so-and-so, hi, I've seen you guys a few times, I'm your neighbor, and I'd like to give you a hand, where are you going? I see you all the time, every now and again, uh, going to the bus stop and I just wanted to give you a hand and introduce myself. And my dad says, he's just so and so and the guy says he says so and so and I'm stood there and I'm looking and I'm thinking what's going on and this conversation starts to take place in front of me <laughs> and he says where are you going let me give you a lift to where you need to go please sir you know I don't want to have to see you dragging the suitcase along right now my dad says he's heading off to blah 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 so he needs to get to Euston station which is a central station in London that then has a lot of trains that take you to any other part of the UK depends on where you're going right long distance journeys 
So we've got to get the bus from the bus to the train station. That train station then takes us to Houston. And this man says to my dad, I'll take you all the way to Houston station. So he starts taking the bags away from me. He's popped his boot open, he's put it in. He's opened the door for my dad. And my dad is impressed. You can just see it. It's really hard to impress my dad, but he's impressed. And I'm thinking, oh gosh, here we go. And then, you know, my dad just waves and says, you know, I'll see you, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a call when I get to the station. And this guy saying, don't worry, I'll take care of your dad, don't worry you're okay don't worry and he takes off and I'm looking at them zoom off and I'm thinking here we go <laughs> so now this guy is clearly interested and he's played the fastest one I've ever seen uh, he's tickled my dad the right way and now I've got to be nice at least to some degree I've got to be nice yes <laughs> I don't know if it's because I was just wise beyond my years as a young person I think when you go through some sufferings and some hard times you tend to grow up a little bit quicker than the next person but I already knew right out the gate that this was his mo this is what he was trying to achieve and I was willing to let it play out I was willing to let it play out <laughs> he could be nice you never know but uh, I just found that to be a bit pushy and I'm already a suspicious person anyway I'm always sort of getting very negative feelings about something and then it's like you're guilty until you're proven innocent as opposed to innocent until proven guilty <laughs> so yes I get home and I'm thinking what was that I thought oh well good luck with that and then I think an hour later my dad gives me a call and he says oh that man was a really good man what a lovely young man you know he's our neighbor he only lives at such and such and um, you know he you know thank him for me when he comes back thank him for me thank him for me when he comes back to the house we had a good conversation he's a really good man I'm thinking in one conversation you think he's a good man okay daddy knows best so I find myself saying, sure, it was wonderful. It was really kind of him to have given you the lift. What did he do? So he got me onto the train. He got me right onto the train and, you know, got my luggage on and I had a conversation with him, my dad says. And this man is really successful. He runs his own law firm on one of the floors of the Canary Wharf in London. OK, um, and yeah, you should you should get to know him. You should get to know him. So he, he, he sounds like a really good man. And I thought my dad has decided this is already a good man. I thought that was interesting anyway. So in about 30 minutes, my doorbell goes and yours truly was standing there and he's like, hi, sorry about the way we had to meet. I'd seen you a few times and, you know, you're always shuttling along with your dad's um, suitcase along the road and it makes a lot of noise. And I looked out and I saw you guys again and I realized he's headed somewhere, you know, periodically. And I just wanted to give you a, a hand. And I thought that was really kind of you. And then I realized I'm standing there he's standing in the doorway and I'm standing there and I'm not letting him in and it's all weird and he looks like he's here to have a chat <laughs> I said do you want to come in and he said yes and he came in and I got to know who he was and we chatted for a little while and he discovered I was single he discovered I was in university and um, you know I, I got the message he 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 liked me it's, it's not science well, clearly he liked me and I was determined to be as nice as possible just to be appreciative of the assistance he had given my dad that I didn't ask for but it was weird right so, you know I don't want to upset my dad and I don't want to get weird with my neighbor and whatever so within about four or five weeks of him checking on me and pressing the doorbell and how are you doing and what's going on what are you studying and getting to know me <laughs> He now says to me that uh, he would like to marry me. Um, he invites me to his apartment and in this apartment he has his other brother. And he introduces me to his brother and the brother gets to see me and there was this weird connect of it looking as though they talked about me, you know, and this is her and um, here she is. This guy sits me down and he's got this whole air about him and he says you know um my brother told me about you i've seen you a few times around and i think you're a really nice girl and you know we would like to marry you and i'm thinking we who's we and he's like we would like to marry you. obviously what he meant is his brother but it, you know <laughs> they the way they say it is we would like to marry you. we would like to have you in our family yes um and i'm thinking oh all right <laughs> 
And um, this guy then, you know, proceeds to carry on with what it was that he was doing when I was brought up into the apartment. And then I noticed a whole lot of computers. It's, it was almost like an office. This place didn't feel like an apartment where someone lived. And it also didn't make sense that he had this brand new BMW and was living in that small apartment with this brother of his and, and whatever it was that they do there. And I noticed over the weeks that there would be meetings held at that house. You'd see a lot of cars pull up in the street and they would all go off and have a meeting in that apartment. It was very unusual. It was very, it was very serious, you know? Um, and so it continued. He would press and say, listen, I'd like to marry you. And on occasion, I was crying terribly in my flat. I did that a lot. And you wonder why? Well, I was a young person in, in the UK alone. Um, I didn't, hadn't made the right circle of friends as yet. Things were quite hard for me. Um, and it was a difficult life, studying, trying to make money and just trying to get a sense about myself. It was difficult. I was lonely and I was always homesick and I always still wanted to go back to Africa. I was still just really disappointed being here altogether. So as you do, when you're having a downtime and you're on your own in your space, you cry, you put the music on and you cry, and you cry and you cry. And on one occasion, he heard me and he knocks on the door and he comes in and he sits down and he's like what's going on with you you know I've told you I'd love to marry you I'd love to take care of you you don't have to live like this you don't have to live like this you're a really beautiful girl you don't have to live live you don't have to live like this we could take care of you you never have to worry about a thing you never have to go through what you're going through you shouldn't live here you know I can take care of you listen I can put you up in one of my houses I've got a few houses some are empty and I can put you in one of them you don't have to live like this but I really do want a commitment I want to be married to you I'm not here to play I actually do want to marry you what's the matter what's the problem and I remember thinking why does he have other houses and he lives he's always in this apartment with his brother and lots of people who come in there they spend the night there they live there sort of thing they, they live out of that apartment <laughs> and so um he says, come on, come out of the house. Let me take you for a ride. And he drives me out to one of his houses in Blackheath. And we get there and there's building works going on. They're fitting a kitchen, they're fitting the flooring and it's a beautiful house, okay? It's a beautiful house. And he says, listen, I'll give you the key. You can stay here. You can live here, okay? You don't have to stay there. It's not, it's not a good place for you. You wanna stay here, I can take care of you. And I said, it's a really beautiful house, but yeah, no, I can't, I can't, right? Think about who I was. Think about how complicated my life was and how my dad had already given the nod, you know, to this guy. Um, and he is someone who gives the nod to no one, okay? My husband that I'm married to right now, my dad gave him a hard time, a really hard time. It was like, why? Why do you not like this man? Why? You understand? But my dad had given the nod to this dude and that was huge. For me right so already i was being coerced into this idea mentally that this could work this could be the dude this could work but i kept fighting it because i one didn't like him <laughs> many women marry men they don't like guys out there you better know this there are women who marry men they don't like you've got the money you've got the cars you've got your establishment they marry you for that security a woman knows how to show affection even if she doesn't love you you better know this that's why there are prostitutes in the world okay i already knew i didn't like him but i was still kind of wondering I mean, how bad can this be? And then on a different occasion, I would sort of be reluctant. I never gave myself to him. He tried a few times and I would say, no, no, no. In fact, that made it a lot easier to ensure that didn't happen. Anyway, onto the topic of how does the individual make that money? Being a university student, I didn't have a laptop and I desperately needed one. And even when I wasn't scheduled for a lecture, I would still head back to the university to make use of the LRC, um, just because I didn't have a laptop to work with at home. During the time I knew this man, I would ask him and say, you've got a lot of computers in your house. Can you give me one of your laptops to do my homework? Can you give me a laptop to do my homework? Can you give me a laptop to do my homework? He would say no, he has important things on it, it's for work and so on. And 
couldn't quite understand why he just wouldn't give me one laptop come on on this fateful day the doorbell goes i open it up and he says here's a laptop you can use this um you can definitely use this and i thought oh thank you and he says listen i'll be back you carry on i'll see you in a minute and he closes the door and then there is a swarm in the street a noise a screeching so i go off to the window and i see lots of cars unmarked cars so they're not they were police or whatever they were but they were unmarked cars and they swoop in and they had these blue lights on them that's how you know that it's uh, you know law enforcement right because they weren't the cars didn't say police on them and i'm just seeing these blue lights and it was the first time i'd actually seen that before actually lots of blue lights and then plain clothed officers coming out from these cars rushing into our building and i'm thinking whoa look at that a daytime movie right here in front of me and in two minutes there's a knock on my door there's a knock on the other neighbor's door there's a knock on the door down the hall and we open up our doors and these plain clothes officers are everywhere and they say we need to know if this key opens this door can you step back ma'am they check the other guy can you step back sir we need to check if these keys open this door listen they were done they said sorry for the disturbance can you get back in your house please and they head off and i shut the door and i'm thinking what is going on and in a few minutes i see them leaving the building with computer um bases laptops and you know lots of things just leaving with a few items and then yours truly is being led out by a couple of these plain clothes officers in cuffs and into an unmarked police car are you getting it are you getting it uh -huh. after i think after about four five hours i think it was this guy gets back and he comes up to my apartment and he says can he have his laptop back mm -hmm. i still didn't understand then even then he just said can i have a back something i need and he took it and off he went later on i asked him i said what's going on why were you arrested what's going on and he explained and this is why he gave me this laptop what they were looking for was on that laptop this is why i got the laptop this is why i didn't get the laptop initially but it was handed to me because i don't know whether they got a tip off but the swarm just came in and he was let go. Now, I remember him telling me a few more things, telling me how much he's worth and, you know, listen, I'm opening up to you and so, 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 and so, and listen, I know it's dangerous. And he had explained how one of them had been arrested before. And there was this agreement that all the guys in the group sort of take care of that person's wife so it's an agreement they would give you know a certain they would transfer certain amounts of money to this one wife if her husband gets arrested so they cover themselves that way and make sure their families are taken care of and i'm listening to this guy and i'm hearing things that i shouldn't hear and it's becoming clearer i should have absolutely nothing to do with this individual okay now, when I heard this, I said to him, you could get in trouble. You know, you could get in trouble. They're never gonna stop. They're gonna come looking for you, right? And he says, no. He thought about it. I said, but you've got a firm. He says, no. He thought about it. And um, he just can't make less than he does now. So I used that as my reason to continue to shy away from the topic of wanting to become a family, you know, wanting to be married slowly but surely it became clear that i was never going to be his girl he kind of got the message that i was just being nice because he was nice to my dad you were nice to my dad i'm just being nice to you and that's how i close it off it then happened my dad had called and asked what about xyz and i said this is who this individual is this is the person you keep telling me is a good man he is not a good man just because he's established you understand and my dad was shocked, like, oops, let me tell you, women. After you get set up by X or Y or Z, you're the one that has to live with that man. Now, if I was already married to this man and this happened, well, I'm going to be that wife at home when you get arrested that gets a contribution from the rest of your gangster whatnots. Is that a life? 
For some of you it is. Some people don't care. Some women, you know, are void of the need to love a man. They just want that money. So maybe that works for you. But for those of you who don't want that, this is why I believe that it was a good idea for me to be a part of someone's journey to their being established. Fast forward to when I met my husband, he had his degrees in Nigeria and when he came back to the United Kingdom, he was a citizen, he came back here to further his life and um, he had to do all sorts of conversion courses because the country has a lot of stipulations on whether you had a degree from a particular country, then when you come here you had to do this again, you had to do that again, you had to... There's just so much you have to do to be accepted with those credentials. And it was a hard journey for my husband. A really hard journey it was tough. We started a family already. It started having my babies. It was hard. It was that marriage that you would say, no, I don't want that. No, he has to be established. That was what it looked like, you know? Um, it was hard. <laughs> he had to travel to Africa for a whole year to, because of another requirement and I was by myself. It was difficult. We didn't have the things that, you know, you would say you would need to make yourself comfortable. It was difficult and we were already having kids. But he had a vision. He had a plan. He was also loving. He was caring. He was kind. He was honest. He was vulnerable. He was all those things that still have a downside based on what it is that you might want. But that worked for me. Now the relationship I described a minute and a half ago with that BMW apartment guy, that might be what some women want. And there are a lot of women who will jump at that. Um, but that's not what I want. The question is, what do you want? <laughs> there is nothing like the right guy or the wrong guy. You just have to make sure that you are the right woman. So make sense of yourself, know what it is that you want, because what you want today might not be what you want tomorrow. The right guy today could turn out to be the wrong guy 20 years later. Don't you realize that people change? Now, if you're part of the process, you might be able to influence the changes that are happening in their life and sort of blend with them and navigate with them to to make the right choices as they change because everyone changes what might mean established to you today might not be what you understand as established 20 years from now do you understand so um you want to pick wisely you want to make it such that your priority for picking a life partner which is a hard hard choice to make in the first place but that your priority for picking a life partner um, at least the first one isn't that he's established you have to find out if he's loving if he's caring if he's um, long suffering you know there will be hard times in relationships there will be times where you will drop the ball and he would have to hold the fort there will be times when he will drop the ball and you would have to hold the fourth you have to be the rock for each other when things are not as expected they're never going to be what you want them to be they're all going to change every single one of them we all did i did my husband did we all came along with each other with those changes and um prayerfully uh we've been able to navigate the difficulties the changes and is he established yes absolutely he's established being established is not the point. Rich people are married, yes. They get divorced, don't they? Yes. So did you ever wonder why? I thought they needed to be established. So being established shouldn't be the first priority. Um, you just have to really start thinking about other things outside of that, that would really shape your life uh, in powerful ways that you didn't imagine in the future. I've told you how it was for me uh, and that experience that I had definitely made me wonder about people who are established. It made sense for me to be connected to someone who was a bit like me. We were coming up the same way um, and he had a vision. He knew what he wanted. I knew what I wanted. We had the same dreams, the same ideologies. It was working that way and he wasn't so far above my, you know, income bracket uh, or, or vice versa it made sense and I was comfortable and we found our way and there's mutual respect. I've been married for 19 years. I'm in my 20th year of marriage and I can tell you that I am thankful. Has it been easy? No. Has it been easy? Absolutely not. 
there's no such thing as an easy marriage absolutely there's nothing of the sort um has it been good absolutely yes <laughs> i don't know what to tell you but it's been good i am thankful and each day that goes by i think to myself wow i'm lucky each day that goes by i think to myself oh my goodness this is good i want that for you i want it to be that when you wake up in the morning next to your spouse when you wake up in the morning next to that husband when you wake up in the morning next to that wife every day of your life that you continue to come into a new realization of how lucky you are that you made the choice that you made you know that's definitely what you want yes <laughs> Thank you so very much for watching. I'm wishing you all the best in your journey to find Mr. Right. Wishing you all the best in your journey to find Mrs. Right. And I just hope it all works out. Thank you so very much for watching. And I'll see you again soon in the next video. Until then, have a good morning, a good evening, a good night, wherever you are in the world. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.